Hello and a warm welcome. I'm Armin Trost, professor at the Furtwangen University in Germany. And this is my series on human resources strategies, a real master course for advanced HR students, professionals and executives. This series is available on YouTube and on all podcatchers like iTunes or Spotify. All slides that support this series are available on my website. For more information, please read the description to this YouTube or podcast. I'd also like to refer to my book, Human Resources Strategies, available at most online bookstores. So, again, thanks for listening. Have fun and gain valuable insights into the fascinating world of HR strategies. All right, so let's talk about sourcing strategies. Uh, this will be two episodes because it's an essential topic. And um, here's the question. What will you do if job ads won't work anymore and executive search turns out to be too expensive? This is an experience a lot of companies make. Um, and, and this refers to the different scenarios I was talking about when we're talking about talent acquisition strategy. Job ads only work in particular situations. And executive search is something which is extremely expensive. So this is what I see with many companies these days, especially in times of talent shortage, that companies start using job ads. I mean, that's their regular way to go. So whenever they have a position to be filled, the first thing is what they do is they post a job ad hoping for applications. Well, okay, good luck with that. That might work with simple hiring, but does not work so well with difficult mass hiring, does not work at all with specialist hiring and not for strategic hiring where you use executive search. Okay. But still, what will you do? There must be other strategies in between job ads and executive search. And here is a fundamental idea um, which everybody needs to understand in talent acquisition. And I was referring to this already in my, in my, in my human resource management lecture a couple of years ago that you also find on YouTube. Um, so some of you might be familiar with, with that idea but still, I have to I have to talk about it now because it's so fundamental. When you look into a labor market, okay, you find three different types of people there. And there are people which we call active candidates. These are people who are actively looking for a job, okay? They're desperate. They are unemployed. Or maybe they are close to graduation in the university but still have no job offer okay and those people they visit job portals they visit career websites they go to job fairs because they have a problem right and 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 you better solve it so better be active okay but there are also people that we call passive candidates passive candidates are people who have a job or who probably have a job and also who might be happy and they are not desperate at all uh, things could continue like 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 it is and uh, but still they are open they are open if something comes uh, crosses their way if they got referred to an attractive job they start to think right? they start to think mm, why not well I'm open. I'm not married to my current employer. Uh, I could go anywhere and if there's something where I could earn more or where I could uh, be responsible for a more attractive task, well, I start thinking. Uh, so I'm open, right? So these are the passive candidates. And then there are not seeking candidates. These are people who will not look for a new job. They are not even open for it. Think of people who just uh, started uh, a new step in their career, uh, which say, well, 
um, I will do this uh, for the next two, three years. Uh, if even I won't like it because it looks good in my CV, which is a stupid idea. Uh, anyway, uh, or, or people, people really love their job. Uh, they love it. And, and, and they really have the serious intention not to change their career in the future. Uh, so, or, or think about people who are close to retirement. They will say, well, I, I will not change. I, 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 will, I will bring this to an end <laughs> and there will be no change. Yeah, well, okay, I don't like my job so much. But anyway, I mean, I, 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 retirement is... Uh, showing up at the horizon so why should i change so right so okay there are these three different types of people and i, I can't say uh the, the the proportion how many percentage are of what we simply don't know and also this depends on on the profession probably that depends on so labor market condition but now here's the thing the people who are not seeking they simply are not there I mean, you can do whatever you like. You can do employer branding. You can use all the sourcing strategies we're talking about now in this episode and the next one. Uh, you, you can run career fairs. You can, you can spend a lot of money in talent acquisition. You won't reach these people. They simply do not exist. Okay? They do not exist. And when it comes to, to difficult mass hiring or when it comes to to uh, strategic hiring or specialist hiring, where, where you always have a low availability of talent in the labor market, the active candidates aren't there either. I mean, really, look at, look at some professions. When I, when I look into the German labor market, there is probably no qualified, motivated, socially competent nurse that is actively looking for a job longer than two weeks. There are none. <laughs> Zero. Okay. Zero. Okay. Now, you see, what is left? These are passive candidates. And, and now, now, here's the consequence. Um, if, if there are only passive candidates left and you want to hire passive candidates because these are the only people where there is still a chance to hire them for difficult mass hiring, strategic hiring, and specialist hiring. I mean, how can you do this? Uh, there is only one way. You as an employer must become active. Okay? You must become active. You must have to move. Uh, you must do something. You must approach them. I mean, that's, that's like on a party. Yeah? I mean, if, if you don't want to go home alone, one of the two must become active. Just uh, approaching another, saying, hello, I'm John, do you want a drink? Or something like this. <laughs> yeah, you know, somebody must become active. Somebody has to make the first step. So what does that mean, being active in, uh, in talent acquisition? That means two things, right? Two things. First is um, related to how you approach candidates how you get in touch with candidates, how you build that relation, so to speak. Okay? And this can be either active or direct or even aggressive. Yeah? Uh, don't, don't, don't take this term too, 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 too uh, seriously. Uh, we could also say in a very competitive way. Right? Uh, it's like in sales, where you don't want to wait until the potential customer knocks at your door. No, you go out there, find the potential customers, and you actively approach them directly in a competitive way. Uh, this is exactly the same here. Uh, or when it comes to approaching candidates, you can be very passive or reserved, laid back. Uh, for instance, when you, you post a job ad, you just you post the ad and then you lay back and wait silently, passively for the applications to come, right? Maybe it's a bit like fishing, yeah? yeah so, <laughs> uh. so this is one thing. The other thing is uh, the, the responsibility. And there can be two extremes. Uh, in some companies, it's exclusively the HR function who takes care for talent acquisition. And, and the idea is simple. It's to say, well, everybody has his or her own business. And I mean, the marketing people, they do their business. The sales people do their business. The production people, they do their business. And the business of HR is to hire people. 
So when it comes to hiring people, here's the HR function. This is what you're paid for. And they, they're doing everything, right? But in some companies, uh, and I will go to deeper into this in, in a few minutes, in some other companies, uh, there is a different type of thinking. Uh, there is the idea that the business line, meaning all employees and, and all managers, or at least a majority of them, are responsible for talent acquisition. This is very active. I mean, this is the question. Who is involved in that? And passive means only HR. Active means uh, maybe the entire company is, is working on talent acquisition. Now, here's the strategic question. And this is an exercise that I, that I really like. When you think about this two dimension, approaching candidates, passive versus active, and when you think about the responsibility, exclusively HR function or the business line, you can imagine a, a, a portfolio again with these two mm, dimensions. Okay, and of course there is one corner where you approaching candidates in a passive way, and only HR is doing this. And on the other, uh, the opposite angle, so to speak, um, in my picture on the top right end, you you might have an active ap active approach, and the business line is involved. So these are the the two extremes, right? And when you think about this portfolio. It's a simple one. Now you can take a pen and you can indicate in which area you as a company play. What is your current strategy? And, you know, I, I did this exercise with many companies in the last few years. I simply used a flip chart and I draw this, 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 this uh, rectangle with a two dimension and then I take a pen and say, okay, now let's indicate. Where are you playing? What is your playing field? To what extent do you actively approach people? To what extent do you involve the line? And then you get you get this kind of playing field, the current strategy. And that very often is in the bottom left-hand corner, very passive and exclusively HR function. But now here's the question. What would be your possible or potential strategy? Could you extend the playing ground towards being more active? Can you extend your playing ground to be towards a higher involvement of the business line? And that really depends on two things, really. That depends on, on, on the cultural context and it depends on, on the readiness of, of the people. I mean, some companies have a culture of not approaching people at other employers. They simply don't do this because they are so... So, yeah, so hesitant or, or we could say shy or they have this culture of, of not, not doing damage to, to other employers while other companies would think the opposite. They would say, well, damaging other employers? I mean, <laughs> yeah, these are our competitors. Of course we do this. I mean, sorry, that's our business. I mean, this is how salespeople think. If you, if you ask a salesperson, is it okay to hurt your competitors? They will stare at you and say, well, uh, that's my job. <laughs> that's my job to make the life of my competitors as hard as possible. Okay, this is a matter of mindset. What is, what is, um, what is an expected behavior? What is good behavior? And that might be an implicit rule. So, so that falls under the category of, of culture. But there's also, uh, when we go to the uh, axis of responsibility, um, there's also a matter of, of readiness. I mean, in some companies, there is a clear understanding that talent acquisition is an HR thing only. And, and I mean HR thing, it's an HR department thing. While in other companies, there is the clear understanding that everybody is responsible for hiring new people. And, and it's a matter of, of, of readiness. Okay? So, you, you have realized in the earlier episodes that I always work with strategic statements. That's a very good way to, to build HR strategies, to have very uh, different strategic statements that reflect two opposite ends of a strategic spectrum. And so let me summarize uh, the, the ideas I've shared with you so far based on a strategic statements. So here's the first statement. And this is about the activity of search and approach. 
The statement says, in sourcing candidates, we are above all cautious. We do not impose ourselves and rely on the initiative of interested applicants. Any form of aggressiveness would not correspond to our values. You, you feel it? <laughs> you feel it? Yeah. I mean, as I said, some companies would subscribe this. Say, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 our that's our way. That's that's our strategy. Okay. Some other companies would subscribe a different statement. And it's more about active and courageous, saying, we are heading straight for candidates. We take the war for talent literally. Our search strategies are cheeky, courageous, and sometimes at the limit of what is ethically and legally justifiable. <laughs> you know? Okay, this is extreme. This is extreme. And you can also feel it. That's, that's a different way of sourcing. Right? And and now you have to wrestle. And and when you when you build your talent acquisition strategy, you you have to, as I said, you have to align the things you do and, and, and now 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 the question really is do you want to go for the first one or do you want to go for the right one? I mean seriously. It, so okay. So what what would that mean? If you are if you are very restrained holding back quiet, passive. Well, you probably use job ads and that's it. You also might engage executive search companies. I mean, then, then you, you will not do the job. Somebody else will do the job. Of course, executive search is, is per se very active. Yeah, but it's not that you are doing it. Somebody else is doing it. So, so you let somebody do the job who has a different mindset than, than you have. Okay? So, Let's let's look into our portfolio again with the with the two uh, dimensions, and uh, let's think about different strategies. What are strategies where the line engagement is rather low, where the responsibility is mainly with the HR department? What are strate uh, st uh, 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 strategies where the involvement of the line, the responsibility for talent acquisition, is more with the business line? Uh, how do strategies look like that are very passive when it comes to identifying and approaching candidates? And what are strategies that are very active when it comes to finding and approaching candidates? So on the passive end, as I said, there are job ads. But the more you move towards the very active end, the more sourcing strategies will show up on your radar. And, and what are these strategies? Let, let, me, let me walk through some of these. Um, you might use career fairs. Okay, career fairs. Okay, that's a little bit more active. You go out, yeah, you leave your office, you go out to where the people are, but it's still passive because you stand in your booth and you wait for the applicants to come. Okay, you might go to campus recruiting. That's even more active. You go to campuses, you visit campuses, you do lectures there, you get in touch with with uh, uh, um, future graduates, students. Uh, well, okay, that's a that's little bit more active. That's something that you really should do with your line, the real supervisors, executives, yeah? Or you might do something that we name social community recruiting. Uh, you really go to LinkedIn or, or wherever and you actively find people and you and you approach them, right? Uh, this is this is more active, right? Uh, uh, you might even do something like like talent scouting. Talent scouting that is something something very competitive. I mean, you you really go out, you observe people in their in their natural work. You can do this in some professions. For instance, in the service industry, um, um, you, you really can observe them. Um, for instance, let's say in in, in banking, yeah, in, or in insurance, insurance business. Um, you, you, if, so, some companies have people who just go out and and take advice from different um, insurance consultants. Just to find out who is the best one, and then they approach them, say, "Well, you know, I asked for advice, but it was not about advice. 
I was just looking for great people. And you are a great person. Do you want to work with us? <laughs> that's the idea. Talent scouting. I mean, that's something that we always did in sports, right? Uh, tribal recruiting. That's also very massive. I mean, you hire one person and after ha having hired one person, you want to hire his or her entire team. Yeah. Uh, that is something that legal firms, for instance, do very intensively. They, they not only hire lawyers, they hire entire teams. Uh, uh, something that I really want to talk about in more, more about detail because it's so important is, is what we name employee referral programs, employee, employee referral programs. This is where uh, current employees refer to people they know in the labor market. And once these people get hired, the one who referred to that person gets a bonus. Uh, that's an extremely powerful tool, extremely powerful. And that requires the business line, right? HR cannot do this by, 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 by its own, okay? So these are different strategies. And the question really is, it's a strategic question. How far do you want to go? How far can you go as a company? And when it comes to difficult mass hiring, you have to go a step further. If you if you just if you talk about simple hiring, okay, continue with job ads, fine, will work. But for difficult mass hiring, this will not be enough. So you better think about this. How far do you want to go? Or especially when it comes to specialist hiring, if you want to hire really rare specialists, not the best, just the good. If if you are if you are faced with with with, with these single unique nightmares. Job ads will not be enough. You, you, you must adapt your strategy. So, so how far can you go? And uh, I would like to share with you our best practice here. Okay? Best practices, as I, as I told you in the episode about pitfalls, is not there to be copied. Okay? But I want to show you a best practice because that gives you a little bit uh, an idea what we are talking about here. And, and how, how intense sourcing might be when it comes to, for instance, specialist hiring. And, 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 and it, what I show you is a, is a, is a plan um, of a company I know, a company I was, I was working with as, a, as, a, as an advisor. And so imagine the following situation, okay? Um, there is a hiring manager, an executive or whatever. And... This hiring manager wants to hire a person, okay? Oh, this is not special. But the special thing is that it's, it's, a, it's a very special posi position we are talking about, very special. So let's stick to my, my earlier example. It's the international tax lawyer. <laughs> uh, probably a nightmare. It's really a nightmare to hire an international tax lawyer, yeah? Even though you don't want to be have the best, you just want to have the good. Okay, that's a nightmare. This hiring manager knocks at the HR department's door saying, hey, HR, I want to hire an international tax lawyer. And okay, now the HR person, we name them HR business partner these days very often. The HR business partner has a talk with this hiring manager talking about this demand realizing in this particular moment that this is a, this is the scenario of specialist hiring telling the hiring manager okay john listen i understand that you want to hire an international tax lawyer that's okay <laughs> but you know this demand falls under the category specialist hiring you know and then john the hiring manager will respond specialist hiring okay and what does that mean okay john this means the following. Here, here is the plan. And this is exactly the way to go here, okay? So, you must be serious. This is a decent case. This is going to be a nightmare, okay? So, that requires a plan. And here is the plan. We're going to set up a project team consisting of sourcing experts, our colleagues from my department, a talent acquisition expert, and the business line. So, I need one or two people from your team, okay? We're going to set up a project team. And now John will respond, really? We need a team for that? I thought we're going to post a job ad. Uh, no, yes, we're going to job, uh, post a job ad, but this will not solve your problem, you know. So we have to do something else. So we better set up a project team. This is a project, you know. Hiring an international tax lawyer is a project. Okay, it's not the biggest project, but 
hey, it's still a project. <laughs> we need some people taking care for that. And this is not something that we can do in HR alone. Okay, got it? Okay, so here is something else what we do. We make sure that all the project team members have at least 10% of the working time available for this particular specialist hiring project. 10%? Yes. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, now you can negotiate. But really, this is not something that you do when you have time left, meaning you will never do it. I need, that needs time, time and dedication, because it's a difficult problem to fill, uh, 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 to, to solve a specialist hiring uh, uh, problem, uh, position. And then, it's the third thing, we're going to run a workshop. Yes, a workshop. <laughs> Uh, and we in this uh, we also run interviews with current job incumbents, other lawyers that you have in your team, maybe to develop a strong and job specific employee value proposition. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. We really have to understand why this job is so attractive. That's the main the major point. What are the three things why uh, a qualified and motivated, uh, uh, suitable? Uh, international tax lawyer should be interested in this particular position and we have to know this otherwise we will not sell it and if we won't sell it we will not fill it got it okay so nice okay we also gonna talk about requirements okay but when we talk about the requirements we only gonna look at gold criteria yeah so together with the line, with this team, we're going to define gold criteria or key criteria, uh, killer requirements yeah, uh, for, for a selection. And, and, and we're we really going to focus on as few requirements as possible. Any additional requirement will make our life extremely hard. And, and wherever possible, we're going to focus on competence uh, on, on, um, on potential, sorry. So if somebody does not have the competence for doing something, maybe he or she might have the potential to learn it. Okay? So this is what we're going to do. And then we're going to have a referral workshop. A refer In earlier days, we named this a Rolodex workshop. A Rolodex, this is, are these crazy devices uh, old managers have on their desk where they collect their, their bus the business cards. You know, this this thing that you can turn, yeah, this uh, uh, Rolodex. Yeah, and today, we would not do a Rolodex meeting. We simply do a referral workshop. This is what we do. We invite some people of which we believe they know people outside the organization who are, might be suitable for this particular position. And the idea of this workshop is simply to sit together for an hour and the people have their smartphones with them and they screen their, their I don't know, LinkedIn, LinkedIn uh, accounts and look whom they know. And then you collect names and uh, identify potential candidates. Um, Okay, we're also going to think in the project team what might be the right channels. In which forums do we post the job ad? In which forums uh, might we find find the people? Right? Um, and then, of course, um, with the business line, we agree on, on who is responsible for, for finding the people, who is responsible for approaching these people. It should be really somebody from the business line, not somebody from HR. Good lawyers want to be approached by other lawyers. That's a, that's a key principle. I, I know it from my business. If, if you want to hire a professor and you approach somebody, this must be done by a professor. Uh, I can tell you also uh, based on my experience. Okay. Now, we might need to prepare some selected colleagues from the project team or, or, or some people uh, more for all active sourcing activities. For instance, for finding the people, approaching the people. I mean, most employees in your organization never did that. They never did that. It's new to them. And, and you cannot just expect them to do this. So it, it's, it's very important that, that you, that you Prepare them. You qualify them. You you coach them. Okay, so 
And then you, 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 you make sure that you have enough time slots for candidate calls because once you approach people, let's say via LinkedIn, and I did it many times in my career, you must be ready for very long talks because you want you approach a candidate, you you expect, you not only must assume, you must expect, and this is what you want, that 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 the candidate you're approaching will react. And by the way, response rate in those cases is normally very high. So they want to talk to you, say, hmm, well, that sounds interesting. Okay, can we have a call in the next week, maybe uh, half an hour? Okay, the half hour will turn out to be a two-hour call because these people want to know a lot. So you better have time. It's really a bad idea to approach people and then have no time for conversation. <laughs> That's a, uh, that, that would be very bad. So you see, this is the plan. This is the plan. And, and you know, it's, it's not that I want to share with you this plan uh, to, to, to tell you that you have to exactly do it that way. I, I'm, I'm, anyway, I'm not in the position to tell you what you have to do. This is just a, an inspiration. And, and, and when you always thought hiring people is about posting a job ad and then waiting for applications to come, sorry, no, no, forget it. Yes, for simple hiring, but for specialist hiring, you, you need a different strategy, really. Sorry, that's, that's how, how it is. There's also different when, 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 you, when, you, when you go fishing in a, in a lake which is, which is full of fish, you just need a net. Okay, but when you want to want to want to hunt for the white whale, <laughs> you don't have your lousy net. That's a project. <laughs> yeah, that might be a life project to find and hunt the white whale. Right. So specialist hiring is about hunting the white whale. Okay, you you. You better have you better have a plan. You better have uh, 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 resources for this. Okay, so I know for many companies this is new. Uh, it, by the way, not for people who were working in executive search. Uh, they they are familiar with that strategy. They 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 can do this. Uh, they know this is the way to go. Uh, absolutely, there's no alternative. Uh, every every executive search consultant will, will tell you that. But for companies, and in particular for HR departments, this is a new strategy, and um, you only you only can do this really when you have a culture of of being competitive in the labor market. You you must you must you must really accept that uh, poaching people is fine, and, and and if you don't have this culture, you you will not succeed. Also, also, I mean, you you must you must consider this kind of active sourcing as as being legal. Yeah, and it must be in line with your with your internal rules of compliance. You you must really have the feeling that it's okay to do this. It's okay, yeah, to approach people actively and to talk to them and and, and to hurt uh, other employers by doing that, picking out and pulling out their best people. Huh? Mm -hmm. So. Um, of course, I mean, if, 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 if the regular employees and managers, if they don't have the readiness for doing something like this, if they do not consider this as, as, as their jobs, you, you're going to have a hard time and, and, this, and this will probably n not work. And, and you can tell it by, by the amount of resources the business line is willing to, to um, accept for this uh, to, or to spend for this. Yeah? And, and, you know, sometimes... Uh, you really must convince the business line. And this is not always easy. The business line really must convince about the active sourcing that this is the most appropriate approach. Um, and, and also one challenge for the HR function, especially for the HR business partners or sometimes the talent acquisition specialist, is that when it comes to specialist hiring in particular, uh, and you want to do this active sourcing strategies, you 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 really better demonstrate uh, seniority and strength. You it's it's your job to 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 guide the hiring manager, telling the hiring manager, look, John, you ask me to, for help, me from the HR. Okay, I help you, but you know it's a shared responsibility, and and, and it's pretty much your responsibility <laughs> to a large extent. Yeah. 
Uh, I know the plan. I know how to go. I know I know which question to ask when. Uh, so, but I need you, and I need you, and either we do it that way or we drop the whole thing. And and um, from my experience or from my observation, I I, I I I see a lot of HR people who would be hesitant to to tell this to a line manager, saying, "Okay, either we do it that way." Oh, we dropped the whole thing. That that's bold. That's bold, and you really have to stand on both feet. And you know, from my experience, uh, what really helps is that you you when you start doing this, once you start uh, doing active sourcing strategies, uh, better have a few successful cases. Uh, it's already good to have one. And then you have a, a good example telling the others, look, you are not the first hiring manager who is hiring for a specialist uh, 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 hiring case. We did this uh, a couple of times. It's uh, basically it's our job. <laughs> and, um, and we learned in the past that when we go this way, this will be very effective. In here, it's, it's really about being effective and, and not efficient. Okay, it's about effectiveness, and and once you have one case, then you have two, then you have three, then you have six, and then you have ten, and then so you, you can you can scale up that thing. Okay, that's that's uh, that's that's uh, uh, that's the idea here. Okay, so that's. So in the next episode, which will be the second part about sourcing strategies, we're going to focus pretty much on, uh, on the two critical approaches, which are employee referral programs, one thing, and the other one is um, talent communities. Okay, so let's have a short break and, and see you then. <laughs>